Hey, boutique owner and other e-commerce friends. <laughs> um, today, I want to talk about a really cool feature that I love, but it does require a little bit of maintenance, um, but I think it's definitely worth it, uh, is these cool color swatches. So a lot of themes have this built in. If not, um, you could always have it custom coded in, but if it's something that's really important to you, it might be the kind of thing that's worth, you know, like being on your features list when you're picking what theme you're going to go with. And then you're making sure that you pick a theme that has as many of the features that you want on it. So this is one of those things. So these color swatches. Now you'll notice that right off the bat, if you have these color swatches turned on, sometimes the colors are not exactly the shade that you would want. And sometimes they're just white and the colors are just not even there, particularly if you have a pattern or a unique color name. Now, what happens is that these themes that have this built in, they're pulling colors from a very, very basic set of color codes. And um, so any color that's out of the ordinary and even some that like I would consider very ordinary, um, like, well, at least in our industry, I mean, like mauve, for example, okay, maybe that's not that ordinary, but to me it is. And mauve would not show up. It would show up as white. Any pattern, so striped, leopard, um, if you had like a sequin or a floral, like none of that is going to, you know, how could your theme possibly know what uh, leopard means? Because even within leopard, there could be different patterns of leopard, which I don't know how deep you want to go into that anyway for these tiny little swatches. Um, also, some themes, the swatches are bigger. So this one, they're quite small, but sometimes they're square or larger circles. So that's just something to look at when you're trying to pick the right theme uh, or if you're having these coded in. But okay, it's really easy though to keep this updated. Um, but here's a couple recommendations. One is if you can start to try to streamline the names, so the variants that you're using, for your colors or patterns or prints or what have you. So if you normally have, for, for pink, for example, if you normally have like 15 different colors that you sometimes use for pink, can you narrow that down? Maybe not all to just one pink, because maybe you do still have multiple, like maybe there needs to be a fuchsia and a mauve, um, and, but maybe is that enough or do you need like three, but you don't need like 15 because this will help you so that when you're adding new products, you don't have to worry every time about the colors needing to be updated in your themes coding, which I'm going to show you how to do. Um, so that's just a tip. Now, the only issue I can see is I know that some clients will, some boutique owners will use the, the color names that the vendor used. So that way, say that they had to reorder, they can remember exactly what color. Because I know there are some brands that could have multiple shades of pink in one dress and you can't remember like even which one you ordered. Um, so if that's the case, then you may want to keep using your, you know, your color names as you have been. But if that's not the case, if you can start to streamline, then eventually you won't have to worry about adding new colors to your theme like I'm going to show you. Um, I always refer when I'm talking to clients, I always refer to a client that I had early on that have, we dealt with this and she had, I think they were like some earrings that were, um, wild mushroom was the color. I mean, there's no way the theme was going to pick up on that. And if you always used unique names like that for the colors, then you're going to have to constantly be adding new color swatches to your themes coding. So it's just something to think about if you can start to streamline that. Anyway, let's get to it. So for this one here, um, let me click into the product so we can take a look at what these are supposed to be. So she's supposed to have burgundy and then this one is showing up as black white. Oh, so on the other screen it was showing white. Interesting. But we could actually change this to striped. Um, Although black slash white on another product may not mean striped. So that's something you want to think about. But for this example, I'm going to change this to black slash white. And I'm going to update what burgundy is on her theme. Navy. See, to me, navy would be darker than that. So that's something else you could update. So when you do update your colors, they're going to override whatever the theme was already pulling. So if you wanted to add something new for navy that you didn't feel like this was navy enough, you could just add it like I'm going to show you and it'll override what's there. 
And same with olive. That to me is more of a, a baby poop um, color than an olive. Well, see, I like olive, but that to me is baby poop. So anyway, <laughs> um, so let's just get to it. You're going to just open whatever basic graphic design program, whatever it is that you use. It doesn't matter. Um, in this example, I'll show Canva because that's certainly the easiest. So go ahead and do custom dimensions and just pick something small like 200 by 200 and do a square. And then here you're going to just have this be the color or pattern that you want to use. Now, you could even go as far as if you wanted, like, okay, say that it was leopard. Um, you could, you could just find like a random leopard print, like for example, on here, uh, leopard, <clears throat> you could just use this, right? Or you could actually take a little screenshot. Um, most computers, it, when you are, um, well, like I'm on a Mac, so it's control shift four. You can like take a little snippet of something. So I'll actually do this for the striped one and we'll see how this looks. Um, so you could do that, especially if it's like a floral print, but I know again, floral, like you could have 10 different floral items. They're going to be totally different florals. So that may or may not make sense to you. Obviously just think about how deep you want to go with this, you know, like how much time do you want to spend on this? Um, but anyway, so, uh, let's see, we were going to do burgundy. So we'll go to background and, um, let's see if it'll let me do it this way. I actually haven't done that. No. All right. So we're just going to pick a color and then we're going to open this. And we're going to pick something that is, that's a little darker. This, and obviously it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but okay. So this is pretty burgundy to me. So, um, you're going to name it burgundy and it's important that this is in lowercase. And if the, if the variant name is two words, like say that it was light burgundy, I know that's not really a thing, but say it was. It would need to be light dash burgundy, exactly like that. It has to be exactly like that, all lowercase. But this is just burgundy, so we're just going to download it. And um, PNG is fine. If you ever have an issue, some themes I think require a JPG rather than a PNG, but I think this theme is fine with PNG, so we're going to stick with that. Okay, then where are we here? Um, we want to change the black and white. Um... So for that one, I'm going to upload um, this little swatch guy that we made. And we'll see how this actually looks. Um, this is blurry, but oh, what did I do there? Let me try that again. Um, let's see how big I can go still going to be kind of blurry, but because that circle is so small, I think it'll be fine. Um, let me just take a bigger snippet. Okay. So let's try this again. Okay. Yeah, this will be better. No, what the heck that is. All right. So this one is, well, this is a little trickier because it's black slash white. Hmm. Let's see how this even saves it. Black underscore white. That's not going to be it. Um, We may have to play around with the title of that one to match it to the variant, or we would got to go in and change her variant name, but let's just finish what we're doing here. Okay. So then I'm going to just update her Navy to, um, to let's get blue here. See, that's more Navy to me, but Navy, and then the olive as well I did not love. Okay. Uh. 
Olive is a tough one, too. I think, like, this is more hunter green. Um... Okay. Olive could probably be up to a little bit of interpretation. Um, it's probably something in between what was already there and what I've done, but we'll just go for it for right now. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into her, your Shopify account, right? You're going to go to actions and edit code, and you're just going to add these as assets. So you're going to go to assets, add a new asset. You can only do one at a time. So you're going to add in these, and again, that black and white is probably not going to work. We're going to have to figure out how to name that one, but let's just give these a go. Olive. And... and navy okay and there's no save button or anything so you're just once you load them up they're in there so now let me zoom back out here we're gonna refresh this page oh and it actually did work that way awesome okay so that is it and once we go back to this home page you'll see that they're all updated here as well now Again, that's going to change anything that was black slash white to this stripe. Now, in this case, that's still right as well. So hopefully that remains correct. Um, but that's just when you want to be um, strategic in a sense about, you know, what uh, words that you're using for your color variant titles. So anyway, um, that is how you're going to update those little swatches going forward. And again, if you can start to streamline everything, then at some point you won't have to do this very often at all. It'll only be when you have a, a brand new print that you've never had before or a very rare color that you've never carried either. So, um, all right. Let me know if you have any questions as usual.